Welcome to Raw Talk. As always, there's a link down below in the description box to both credit WWE and in case you didn't watch the show and you want to be able to qu quickly click on some of these videos to get a little snippet as to what went down during each segment. So the show opened up with a recap of Cody Rhodes basically giving The Rock his spot to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. Then Seth Rollins opened up the show, talked about what he saw in SmackDown, calls out Cody Rhodes to the ring so he can finally get an answer as to whether or not he's going to face him at WrestleMania 40. And then we started hearing Rocky Sucks chants. It was like 1996 all over again. A lot of people in the crowd, just like back in the day with the Cesaro section signs, it was hashtag we want Cody. Drew comes out basically says, yeah, 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 that's right. You should go after Roman Reigns because Drew wants to go up against Seth Rollins. Drew is 0-2 with Seth, but then Seth is 0-3 against Cody. Okay, so that's what went on. Then Drew took a cheap shot, and essentially uh, there was a bit of a brawl, and we never got the answer. We never got the answer as to what the hell is going on with that whole thing. And I'll just tell you right now, it's because on Thursday at the press event at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's going to be revealed as to what is officially happening at WrestleMania. Okay, so I'm going to be staying tuned in for that. The fatal four way match for the uh, qualifying match. Yeah, New Day DIY Imperium Creed Brothers. Absolute crazy, crazy match. Julius Creed is nuts, but when he goes off the walls and he's getting all crazy, shaking like he's having a seizure, you're wasting precious time. And then that slight moment kind of looked awkward, but the whole thing was amazing. DIY won. I would have been fine with either them or the Creed brothers. So that's that. Creed brothers. Yes. Shayna talks about Becky and how she needs to kick her ass and then Becky says that she needs to kick Shayna Baszler's ass just a very you know generic little quick little word before they come out and then we had Becky versus Shayna and Becky wins and it was a great match it was a great match I really liked it and then backstage Liv Morgan says it's been a year wants revenge against Rhea Ripley as well backstage Adam Pierce ripped into Drew McIntyre and says that he was going to fine him for attacking Seth because he's not medically cleared and for wearing that shirt that says rest in peace. CM Punk's, you know, moment. Rhea Ripley yells about Nia Jax. I have these backwards somehow. They have this backwards somehow. Yeah, Rhea Ripley yells about Nia Jax. Adam Pierce comes out. Elimination Chamber, he says Nia versus Jax. Nia versus Rhea. Sweet pineapple. I pulled a Michael Cole. Nia comes out to take out Rhea and the security, which in my opinion should actually be girls. And I'm not trying to be that guy. I just, I'm being serious. The security always a bunch of freaking pansies. And when you have Nia Jax and you have the guys coming in and Nia Jax is smacking around the uh, security team. How well do you think that would look to have a bunch of dudes beaten up on on a woman? That's just never a good look. So get some goddamn women security and that are actually capable. Same thing with the men for the men. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Then Ivar... Oh no, right here. Yeah, Michael Cole was talking about how it's not official. So that's how I know it's official, that it's not official. About The Rock and Roman at Mania 40. Again... Thursday press event. Ivar versus Valhalla. Ivar and Valhalla defeat, sorry, Akira Tozawa and Maxine Dupree. And this was like a squash match, but I want to talk to you about something really, really quick. And people might be like, oh my God, are you serious right now? I'm just saying. So we've come a long way with making women look less like sex props in wrestling, which I think is amazing. There is a lot of incredible talent with women. Trish Stratus, Nikki Bella, I thought was actually pretty good. Um, there's just so many right now. It just, you know, 
Alondra Blaze. Like, there's just so many women that are just amazing. Charlotte Flair, Shayna Baszler, Ronda Rousey. I could just keep going and going. There's a plethora of amazing women. Liv Morgan's actually really, really good. Tiffy, Tiffy Stratton, the, the new person that's new to me, right? And speaking of her, speaking of Becky, speaking of Maxine half the time, except for this match where she had the thong crammed up her derriere, but it had like a fishnet covering her ass. What is with that lately? Right? Because now that I'm really, really paying attention to all the details of every match, because I didn't do that before, but since I made this channel, you can tell now that I'm actually paying attention to the product because I'm noticing minor, in this case, curvy details. And to me, it's just kind of odd. So I went back just to make sure that it wasn't just my imagination. And if you looked at the Bella Twins, okay, at their crop tops, the whole thing, they were kind of dressed like Randy Orton, if you know what I mean by that, by his attire. It actually covers his butt, not crammed up there. That can't be comfortable. Anytime I get a mild wedgie which, with my boxer shorts or anything, I'm like, get that out of there. That's disgusting. But in all seriousness, not to make a huge deal out of this, why is it in recent memory, and I don't recall that, is it, like I said, Becky Lynch, Maxine, Tiffy, just like right up there. What they couldn't afford the extra couple of inches just to cover. I mean, you could have the little bottom part sticking out a little bit. But if you look back at the Bella Twins history, very rarely do you ever still see it, right? Through the Anyways, I'm just saying I find that bizarre lately why they do that. They're all covered up everywhere else, but their butt is like on full display 90%. I'm just saying that's kind of fucking weird to me. That's all I'm saying. And that was an observation that I made when Maxine came out. I was like, oh, wow, they didn't tell her to just have a full moon out there. And then again, going back, right? To me, that was the perfect example to bring up the Bella Twins when it comes to that. Moving on. Oh, and Maxine did look... It's weird. She does all these fancy moves, but yet still somehow makes them look a little awkward and off. May sound rude. I'm just calling what I see. I don't sugarcoat it. And I'm not saying she shouldn't be in the ring. That's not what I'm saying. Calm down. At least she's not Brie Bella. Speaking of the Bella twins, because they definitely weren't twins when it came to quality of matches. No offense. I mean, uh, Bella, Brie Bella reminds me of Nia Jax, quite frankly, except for a few obvious details. So backstage Judgment Day chat, our truth shows up. And of course... J.D. McNugget gets in his face, and if I didn't have a match, you wouldn't be doing shit. You'd be getting Goomba stomped. But after everybody left, and it was just DP and R-Truth, Damien Priest is just like, you know what? <laughs> Whatever, make yourself at home. Like, that was, that was kind of cool. It really was. Yeah, so The Miz did defeat... Oh, and then backstage, The Miz was talking about how everybody loves our truth why they love our truth because it's like he's a blend of crazy and a genius. And J.D. McNugget and The Miz had a great match. This was actually really good. Truth came out handing out T-shirts and stuff like that, giving them out for free. Puts a Dirty Dom in, in a T-shirt, just puts it right over him, and it looked like he was in a straight jacket. It was just kind of funny. But yeah, the, he's really good in the ring. I don't like him. He drives me nuts, but he's he's really good. Uh, JD, that is. Backstage Imperium. Chat with Adam Pierce to make sure and ensure that there is a level of integrity of quality when it comes to celebrating Gunther's historic 600 days as Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, as nobody's ever done that in history. It's the longest ever. Then Braun Breaker showed up really quick to chat about potentially signing with Raw. That guy is going to be amazing no matter where he goes. Speaking of Tiffy and uh, Tiffy, Tiff, Tiffany Strat, whatever. By the way, that's Ludwig's uh, real girlfriend. Uh, yeah, to me, they're just awesome. Those are some huge additions. Backstage CM Punk, they showed uh, some video footage of him having successful surgery on his tricep. Cole says he's going to be out for a number of months. 
what I'm hoping is March already next month is May, May June, July, August. Yeah, he'll be back. I hope something cool happens for him at SummerSlam, but there'll be something before then. But anyhow, Imperium were in the ring introducing Gunther, chats about how no one's good enough to face him, and then Jey Uso comes out. This was awesome. The back and forth. I, I always call this pulls a Heyman, as in pulling a Paul Heyman. I just really like that strategy, that whole, oh, look at you. You're accomplished yourself. I'm the longest reigning Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion of all time. You're the longest reigning Tag Team Champion of all time, but you only put in 50% of the work, though. Get it? Because Tag Team... Uh -huh. Right? Like, I just... I love that so much and how there isn't always outside interference. And then the chit-chat turned into a brawl. And then the New Day came to the aid of Jey Uso. Vignette promo with Shinsuke Nakamura. As always, this was great talking about Cody and their upcoming match for the bull rope match that happened. I'll talk about that in a moment. I still think it's funny as shit every time this happens. So he speaks Japanese like 95% of the promo. So naturally, most people won't be able to understand, uh, you know, Japanese. Konnichiwa. Yokoso. Okay, so what they do is they have English subtitles. Moi, je peux aussi parler le français. Anyways, enough about that. Having a Tourette moment here with all the multiple languages that I'm speaking. What was I about to say? My brain's all over the place. At the end, when Shinsuke Nakamura is chatting, it's in English. I can hear him. I can understand him. But they still have the English subtitles. I just, I don't know. I just, I always think that that's kind of funny. Yes, he has a Japanese accent. But... I could fully make out what he's saying. Fully. And English is not even my first or my second language. Okay? I just thought, you know, I'd mention that. But that was funny. Caden and Katana. Great. Amazing. Match versus the Kabuki Warriors. Kabuki retained. Don't forget Caden and Katana. Speaking of longest reigns, they're the longest reigning NXT women's tag team champions of all time. I don't know how many days they held on to it. But it was up there, and Uso, I had forgotten, he cracked over a thousand days with the tag titles, which was really, really cool. Uh, they're just awesome. I love the Usos. I miss the Usos, man. Like, as a tag team, but I'm really digging the whole uh, Jey Uso character. Jimmy Uso, I like just as much. I just don't like his character. I'll, like, I'm scared of everything, and just, I don't know. Just, I'm just not digging the way they're portraying him. Backstage, Sami Zayn chats with uh, Jackie Redman while he's sitting on the bleachers reminiscing about how 2023 was a big year for him. He had all these great opportunities and stuff like that and how he feels he needs to prove to himself but more to the fans that fill in those seats that they were both sitting in, you know, that he's capable. He's not an underdog. He's a contender, okay? And then Cody versus Shinsuke in a bull rope match. They should have called it the poison mist match because, again... Uh, you know, he got missed it. Only this time it wasn't painful and he was able to get through it, wallop Shinsuke into the ground and win. And of course, Drew came out and walloped Cody in the face, gave him the Claymore kick, and that's how it ended. It's over. That's how it ended. Again, weird breakdowns on some of the stuff that I talk about, but like I said, I have I have no shame. If I have a thought and it enters my mind... However weird I might think people are going to perceive it, I'm not going to hold back on what I'm thinking. You don't have to agree with me. Like the thing about the, uh, you know, the, the lady shorts there going up the derriere. You know, whatever. You could be like, dude, you're totally like overthinking it. Great, maybe I am. It's still a fact that it's happening more than ever. And uh, like I said, I have no filter whatsoever and i'm half asleep and i'm tired as always a thumbs up if you did like the video it does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm so they say with the algorithm in trying to make me more relevant in the search results when people are looking shit up you didn't like the video thumbs down we'll bend it in half twist it as always get a solo sokoa samoan spike in the rectum 
And if you want to uh, subscribe, exactly. Self-explanatory right there. And if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care. And like I said, I might make a separate video on Friday. Because by then, Thursday will have come. The press event thing, that's huge. Uh, because like I said, that's where gonna, they're going to officially announce like what are the matches. Like, is Cody facing Seth? Is The Rock actually facing Roman? Or is it going to be one of those weird things where... Well, not a weird thing. It happened at WrestleMania 14 or whatever with the switcheroo there where you had the ref, the special guest ref. And, uh, yeah, we could have The Rock as the ref to ensure that nothing weird goes on. Cody finishes the story with Roman Reigns. Which, to me, like I said, my thought, and I've already talked about this a couple times, I do feel like that's the proper way to end the story, to make Cody reach heights that even the James Webb telescope can't fucking see. Like, by the way, that telescope can see billions of light years away. Just in case you don't know about that telescope, it's a big fucking deal. Just to try to show you the elevation that Cody Rhodes has reached, that would put him, like, on a crazy pedestal. That, more than Seth Rollins, no offense. Seth Rollins' title, it's true. It's a more legitimate workhorse champion, but I want Cody to make the other title that. We don't need Roman Reigns to, to beat Hogan's record. Hogan is still, arguably, no matter what you think of him personally, Hulk Hogan will forever be one of the most iconic figures, characters, personas... In the history of wrestling, across all generations, across all promotions, he just, he is. I remember watching WWWF when it was the World Wide Wrestling Federation and then World Wrestling Federation. And at the bottom, trademark, you know, the C, the copyright, whatever. And it would all, always say, like, Hulkamania, blah, blah, blah. You know, Hulk is a trademark of... Right? You didn't see that with any other superstar. Like, he was the guy. Okay? I'm not saying it shouldn't be broken. I'm just saying it's okay to have Roman not break that and be the fourth longest reigning champion of all time. Really. Uh, because I'm, I'm, quite frankly, I'm not done with Roman Reigns. I'm not done with Roman Reigns at all. Like, not even close but I am done with him hijacking the title. It's just, don't even get me started on that because I've already ranted about that enough times. It is time for Cody Rhodes more than ever. Going on two years talking about the fucking story. Close the goddamn book. Seriously. Like, now is the time to do it. That is the right move. From a business perspective, from a fan base perspective, Whatever perspective you want to call it, very few will argue. It's his time to shine. Plain and simple. Take care, and I'll see some of you in the next one, hopefully. Bye for now.